Welcome back, Kern Phil. We also have Tom Giles here. Uh, Kern, why, why, I understand why you want to get more players through the draft, but why trade that and why mortgage your future at possibly getting a franchise quarterback? Because you mortgage your future more radically betting on one quarterback to be your franchise savior. Additionally, you're bringing a quarterback into a situation that is in such total flux that he's probably going to sit for the entirety of the first year, if not sit for the entirety of his first year, be just an apprentice and then get some token reps on a bad team. To me, that's wasting a year of his rookie contract. It's one of the most valuable um, economic savings in sports is a quarterback on his rookie contract. So if you don't have those wideouts now and you don't have a left tackle, you trade down and you make an absolute mint from a team like, say, for instance, Minnesota, who has the 11th overall pick and the 23rd overall pick. You could even shake them down for next year's number one pick. It is being speculated. So you get three number ones overall, and you'll still have your number one from next year. You get left tackle. You get wide receiver. You get another corner to match with Christian Gonzalez. You then have the situation like Philadelphia, like Kansas City, like Tampa Bay was before Tom Brady went there. And that's what Kansas City did. But we can go on and on with teams that are examples of building first and then putting the parachute in, having the quarterback parachute in and having great success. Yeah, I just think if you have a franchise quarterback who's there, if you pass on him, you might be looking for the guy for the next 10 years. It's, it, you can't just create a quarterback. The, the Eagles lucked out, taking a guy in the second round, and it worked. And the situation around him is great. That situation took about a decade to build because the real crux of that team is built around the offensive line, which is Jason Kelsey and Lane Johnson, guys that were taken you know, when Jay, Jalen Hurts was in high school. So like, you can hit if you hit enough at these critical positions, where, which are, I would acknowledge, those positions, I think you have a better chance of hitting on tackle, for instance, of even receiver in this day and age than you do quarterback because quarterback is just so damn hard to evaluate. But if you think you have a guy there at three overall, even if you hit on all these positions Tom's talking about, you're still nothing without the quarterback. And you're going to be looking for the quarterback. Brock Purdy is a rare example. That's the exception. Jalen Hurts is the exception for the most part. For the most part, these guys are found in the first round. The guys that weren't found in the first round, for instance, the Eagles with Carson Wentz at number two, Trey Lance at number three with the Niners. Because they had built teams, they were able to withstand that miss. But the team was built before those misses were made, not so much with the Eagles, but they still had an offensive line. So to me, you build the team, then you bring the quarterback in. Break the tie, Giles. Which way do you lean? It's all about the conviction with the third overall pick. If they love the quarterback at three overall, I want them to take the quarterback. If they have any hesitancy, if there's any, you know, if, if they think but that assume, this might assume be Assume the they love the guy. Because, Tom, and I think we're both working off okay. the, the premise yeah. that you love the guy. Because yeah. even if you love him, in Tom's scenario, you're not taking him because the team's not ready. I, I, I'm taking the quarterback then. If I love the guy, I want to take the quarterback because I, I, I'd want that next franchise quarterback. And even if he has to sit for the year, which – I, I, I don't love that idea, but even if he has to, you think that you have the next guy, and I want you to be confident and, and be aggressive with, with your conviction. My, mine is very May-driven. If Jaden Daniels comes out, he does things that are unique that you can't find elsewhere. I think if Jaden Daniels is at three, I would more likely take him, certainly, than Dr Drake May. If it's looking like Drake May is the guy, out, 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 out. Phil, do you think they can get the Hall Curran suggested, which is two firsts this year, right, Curran, and a first next year? Both of the Vikings' first-round picks this year and a first from next year. It's asking a lot, but I think that's there based upon the – was it the Niners move? The, the Niners move from 12 to 3, and they did get three first-round picks, but two of those were future first-rounders. And the way the NFL does this, for whatever reason, it doesn't make a ton of sense to me, honestly, because if you're just building for the future, you're happy with the future first-round picks. But they dock those in terms of value. Everybody does it. It's how they come up with fair trades year after year after year come draft time. So Tom's scenario would be more. The Patriots would be getting more than what the Dolphins got by making that move from 3 to 12, and it's a farther drop for them. And so maybe, you know, I don't know how you look at those and say – they're equal, they're not. Um, but if they love the quarterback enough, if the Vikings love Drake May enough, Josh McCown worked with Drake May, Josh McCown's in Minnesota now, then maybe they can make that work and say, forget it, fine, just throw the future first in there and we'll get our guy. And this is why I think Elliot Wolf's in an unenviable position here because let's say that the right thing to do would be to trade out of that number three overall pick. Everyone's just going to have their eyes on what happens with that third quarterback for the next couple of years. And maybe he goes to a good situation. You're sitting there thinking that could have been it. They could have had the guy or maybe some of the guys they do draft later on in the first round, not the quarterback, don't work out. I mean, it's 
this the, again, this is where they, they have to nail the draft, and it's also because they didn't do enough in free agency. Kern, why are you so confident, too, that they could just find a quarterback in like a year or two if they don't take one this year? Because you don't really find quarterbacks in the top five of the draft. And I'm going to go into this a little more deeply, but when you look at the top five of the draft, generally speaking, the better players who succeed go to good situations. Patrick Mahomes went to a good situation. Josh Allen, even. He wasn't a top five pick. Top five picks are like Trey Lance, um, Sam Darnold, Zach Wilson. It's replete with players. Baker Mayfield is on his, what, third team now? I think it's very difficult when you go to a place to be the savior. Kyler Murray has had a good career statistically, but he's not a, you know, he, he can't get out of his own way. There's just so many guys who end up in that top five tier who don't come in and succeed because of the situation. I think that is mostly because they go to bad teams. I, I don't think every team that drafts a quarterback in the top five just plain misses on the evaluation. Yes. So you have to get the situation right, but you can do it both ways. You but can this get could the be a bad team. You could get the situation right later. And if the guy's the guy and you think he's got the metal to handle it and you think he's got the attitude and he has the, the chutzpah and the physical ability to go all, along with all that stuff, then you could really have struck gold at the top of the draft. The Bengals are doing it with Joe Burrow now. The, the, Peyton Manning, you know, back 20 years ago, we can bring up those examples because they're number one overall picks and they are great picks. Um, you can get it right even if it doesn't look bad now, but you have to hurry. Daryl Burrow's situation got much better within his second year. That's something that the Patriots would have to be attacking if they took a quarterback at number three overall. Phil, what would make you change your mind? Uh, if something happened between now and the draft with one of these guys and, you know, you have a Laramie Tunsil situation with a gas mask on draft night. <laughs> uh, like, I, I don't know. Like, what, should anything change anybody's mind at this point? Unless we hear that they're interviewing horribly and that these guys were incredibly well prepared because I heard both Jaden Daniels and Drake May did really well in terms of how they presented at the Combine. If something happens to really drastically alter those opinions, then I might be moved off my spot. If there's an incredible haul for you there at three, sure. But if you think... Those two guys are franchise guys, and I think both have the potential to be, then you don't pass. All right. Well, if the Pats do stick at number three, perhaps it won't be for Daniels or May. Draft expert Lance Zerline tweeting, had a discussion with a position coach for a team who doesn't need quarterback, who couldn't stop gushing about J.J. McCarthy and his timing, vision, and intangibles. I'm telling you, has a real shot of being QB3. Meanwhile, Boston Sports Journal, with their latest mock draft, they have the Patriots staying at three and picking McCarthy over Drake May. And how about one more McCarthy fan? Here's draft expert Thor Nystrom on why he has McCarthy over Drake May while appearing on Kern's Patriots Talk podcast. As far as Drake May, the, the reason that I put him beneath McCarthy is, first of all, you know, he led UNC in rushing in 2022. You guys know Sam Howell ran for a bunch of yards in the Phil Longo offense his last season as well. Uh, last season, uh, Drake May didn't run for nearly as many yards. There's been this idea that Drake May is the rushing utility. It's going to be like Herbert. It's going to be like or Josh Allen or whatever. Mm -hmm. Th that is not going to translate to the NFL. He is not that caliber of athlete. He is going to be more or less a pocket passing quarterback in the NFL. All right. So, Giles, draft night, April 25th. Roger Goodell says, in with the number three pick in the draft, the New England Patriots suggest Michigan's J.J. McCarthy. How you feeling? Not good. <laughs> Not good. I mean, I watched, watched – how many people watched the national championship game, which might have been the only time that they saw J.J. McCarthy and thought, that's the guy. There he is. He should go number three overall. He's, he's got to jump up into the conversation. I just feel like – and we still have 37 days to go, 38 days Too to many. go. So many days where you just try to talk yourself into these other scenarios. I just – I don't remember seeing J.J. McCarthy in, in any of the games at Michigan step up and, and show that he can be a guy, especially if he is going to step into a bad situation because he, he was in a great situation at Michigan where they ran the football. Yeah, I think, listen, more information is better with everything, especially when it comes to evaluating quarterbacks. And there's just not a lot of information on J.J. McCarthy because he's gone through seasons where you can look at full games and he's barely breaking, you know, 14 pass attempts. That's just – that's not the college game certainly anymore outside of Michigan and maybe a handful of other pro-style programs. And it's not the NFL. If you're taking the guy top three in the draft, you're going to ask this player to in some ways carry your team early in his career in all likelihood. And so I think he's got a ton of traits that are really impressive, as Thor explained to us on the Patriots Talk podcast there. He can move. He throws really well outside the pocket, which I think is a prerequisite in today's game. 
Uh, he's apparently really smart. I heard that he another guy that interviewed well at the combine and impressed on the board and all those sorts of things. You just don't have a ton of information on him based on his college backlog of throws, Tom. And if you spend some time and listen to the pod, you'll enjoy it. Um, Thor goes chapter and verse as to why he's so impressive. He was sitting in the fourth quarter of so many games, so he wasn't a stack compiler in some ways. Throwing on the run, throwing on the move, he's one of the fastest players in the draft, most elusive players in the draft with his three-cone and his shuttle. You look at Drake May, not as fast, doesn't throw as well off platform as J.J. McCarthy. He has a stronger arm, J.J. does, than Drake May. And there's so many things that you hear said about him throwing on the move. Phil, what are his numbers on the move? Um, yeah, he's like at an 80% on target rate while on the move. So outside the pocket, you know, he's putting it where it needs to be put. Again, there's a relatively low threshold there for him because he, has, he doesn't have that many throws, period. And I think some of those things are debatable. Like he and Drake May might have similar arms, uh, scouts would tell you. And he probably is faster, but I don't know if you're including him as part of your quarterback run no. game all that frequently because he's about – he weighed in heavier at the combine is, you know – there are some things you can do to make sure that you're weighing heavier than what you're probably playing at. He's probably closer to like a 205 guy than a 220 guy. Um, but there's certainly a lot to like there. You just have to buy in on what you've seen when the reps are far fewer than some of these other players. Why you should put stock in some of what Thor is saying is we had him on early edition in 2021. He was outstanding in really pinpointing what Mac Jones was. Said he wouldn't trade up for him. He'd take him at 15 because of who he was and how he was. And he hated Zach Wilson. He said he didn't even have him in the top 10. So, to me, if you listen to this guy, you'll be a little bit more swayed on somebody who <laughs> you might not be that familiar with. You sneeze at that, I would not sneeze at Thor. <laughs> Excuse me. <laughs>